Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't seen my face before, my name is Alicia and I'm really excited for today's video. I'm going to be vlogging LSE's largest education symposium of the year and I'm also going to be public speaking there about my journey, my internship at LSE and also why I started a YouTube channel. 75% of you are watching my videos but I'm not subscribed and that just doesn't make sense. <laughs> make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so that you can be updated whenever I upload new videos like this one and also if you want to comment any videos that you'd like to see I'll reply to all the comments. Just annoying me, and I'm too about it. And the dirt that they do on my name turn to soil, and I grew up about it. Time for y'all to figure out what y'all gonna do. About so, we have an entrance right next to the Royal Courts of Justice, which is really pretty and a little bit weird, to be honest. G5, G5, I've been losing friends and finding peace, but honestly, that sounds like a fair trade to me if I ever heard. This is so funny because at this point I was actually just deep in line. I was so scared. I was literally the only undergrad on the panel. Oh my god. Once we had decided the theme for this symposium, we reached out to find students who could speak to it from their own experience. The speakers today range from undergraduate level to PhD candidates, um, and they will be talking about various projects that they've been a part of, um, all of which engage with the, the big theme about education for the common good and those questions about how the university is supporting that and also how we can aspire to do better. Our third speaker uh, is Alicia Bruce, who's an undergraduate um, in the Department of Government. Um, Alicia also has a YouTube channel about gaining scholarships and, and supporting people in education. Um, so if we could drop that into the chat and uh, on Twitter right now, brilliant, David. Um, and I will pass over to Alicia to tell you more about her experiences and projects. Thank you all for having me. Um, so I'm a first year undergraduate and I'm currently pursuing a BSc in politics and economics here at the LSE. So, um, so I'm the baby of the panel, so please go easy on me in the Q&A. <laughs> but um, I'm also an Ugla Family Scholar and I'm a part-time programme director and mentor in education with a brilliant charity called Debate Mate. And I also secured work experience with BCG, PwC, IEA, ASI, Now Pensions, Civica and the Inclusion Initiative in my first year and the one that I'm going to be delving into is the Inclusion Initiative. I'm not sure if anyone has heard about the Ugla Family Scholarship Programme but it's quite a unique scholarship and when I told my um, headmaster at my old school that I got it he was shocked um, at how large it is because it's the largest um, financial scholarship at the LSE but um, what's quite special about the scholarship is that it's not only financial aid but what comes with that is also mentoring career coaching. Through that I networked and cultivated a connection with Dr Grace Lorden and um, this is a great connection because she's a very accomplished individual and she's very inspiring and I'd sort of phrase her as very much a girl boss. So <laughs> this is what led to me having an internship with the Inclusion Initiative. So I offered to volunteer with the Inclusion Initiative just because I had researched their mission and fell in love with what they were doing here at the LSE and um, by January, I was offered a research internship with them and the project that we looked at was thinking of behavioural biases in regard to transitioning back to work post-COVID. These biases could be either pre-existing biases relevant to that transition or it was actually an opportunity to be really creative and think of new biases. Specifically, I reconceptualized two pre-existing biases and I also created two of my own. My favorite bias that I created is called the deferred meeting bias. And um, I noticed that my macroeconomics lecture is actually in the Zoom, so I probably shouldn't say that this was my favorite one, but um, <laughs> it's the tendency to actually avoid attending live virtual meetings because you persuade yourself that you will view the meeting recording later but yeah <laughs> but because of a plan and fallacy sometimes that doesn't materialize essentially this project was particularly amazing for two reasons and the first thing that i took away from that was the fact that i was the only undergra undergraduate 
on a team of postgrads and professors. Initially, I was really intimidated because I thought, what can I bring to the table as a first year? I, I know nothing. It definitely expanded my horizons and perspectives. And it also made me pull up my socks a little bit because just because I'm the youngest of the team doesn't mean I can just, you know, chill. I'm still assessed on the same standards. I think it was great because the project did exactly what you said. It brought together research and different minds to help build more inclusive work environment. LSC should push for more interaction and internships in other departments between masters and undergraduate students. Um, just like how I am on this panel today, I've already picked up so much from um, our master's students here and PhD students as well, just in how they articulate themselves. That's very inspiring for me. And um, I think that LSE should take advantage of that high postgrad population that we have here. The second thing that I took away from this project that was really important was the relevance of my project to the wider world. So as a first year, the fact that I had the ability to influence the way that corporations think about how they provide inclusive work environments was pretty amazing. When it was shared on LinkedIn, professionals and leaders in their field were actually commenting on the project and saying that it stretched their thinking on the subject and it was a great read and that they hadn't thought about certain things before. Yeah, so it shows that the voice of a young person matters at the end of the day and that's what I'm, I love about LSE. But it's projects like this that have actually given me the confidence to launch my own venture. So I've always wanted to help students, particularly from disadvantaged backgrounds, in accessing top tier opportunities because I mentioned that I was that I am an ugly family scholar here I also gained two scholarships prior to that one to sixth form and one to grammar school but I only ever found them accidentally I wish that I had someone that looked like me to tell me and guide me through the application process it would have massively helped and I would have felt a bit more relaxed going into that my YouTube channel discusses accessing scholarships, opportunities, amazing universities like the LSE, um, internships and more. And to do this, I give an honest account, I'm very transparent there, um, of my struggles and my journey from state school to private sixth form to LSE. Yeah, if you have any, I don't know, younger siblings, friends, cousins, anything like that, um, then I'd massively appreciate if you could spread the word because I'm trying to help out as many young people as possible. But thank you. And if anybody in the room has a question, uh, please raise your hand and uh, we'll, we'll start in. Does anybody want to go first? Yes, here at the University of the Future need also to reach out, like invite those who might come from different backgrounds, support those who are already inside and then accompany them and not just leave them to take care of themselves. I think that that what your point is about social mobility is why I really value scholarships. But the reason why I brought up the fact that my scholarship has like quite a unique design and the fact that it's not just a financial aid is because I feel like LSE could actually capitalise on the non-financial elements because obviously not everyone can receive a financial scholarship, that's unrealistic. But all the other things have actually meant more to me than the money in the immediate term anyway. And stuff like personalised career coaching, stuff like having networking opportunities would be extremely valuable and I feel like it would make you feel not lost because when you come to such a massive university like this it's very easy to feel lost and out of place as well in terms of social mobility and your point as well about um, LSC sort of interacting with um, students before they come here is actually a great idea because um, I'm not sure how exactly it would work but my um, sixth form, what they did to promote their scholarships was they actually visited um, schools in the area from high poverty areas and promoted the scholarship and ways that they could get into the private school. So I think that that's something that LSE could definitely engage with. I mean, I think, um, so at the LSE we have the widening participation division, which I think does a lot of work in um, you know, talking about the experience of the LSE and, and making sure it's accessible as possible to all sorts of individuals. Um, and they actually uh, help me get the data about student cares at the LSC. Um, so they're definitely pioneers, I guess, in that aspect. Sort of thinking what Alicia was saying about like these broader things. And also, I guess, a little about the conversation before. I, I personally don't share the enthusiasm for speed uh, in learning. I know that's an increasing global necessity, but I actually think you'll have more people being left by the way. So we already have this, as I mentioned, a very consumptive-based model of learning. Um, 
yet we actually see that students are even less integrated into learning environments. LSE notoriously performs very poorly in student satisfaction. When I went to university, it was to get a better life, to get out of poverty, you know, immigrant parents. And it just seems that narrative has shifted slightly because of the current government and austerity. And something, Camille, you alluded to, the idea of, of being a carer, for example, then looking at what Alicia was saying around, you know, all the work that you're doing and the internships and the opportunities. This idea of time and how we and, and how important it is and having time to do all these things. I mean, I can start off by saying that uh, the um, main theory that I'm using in my thesis is a, an economic model of household production, which basically, uh, in it, basically, it says education uh, improves your technical efficiency, which is that you become better essentially at, at uh, using your resources to produce goods, include, including things like informal care, informal care in the sense. I was, I was going to comment on that as well because I feel like me and you probably have a similar background because for me, I feel like, and I don't know if this is like the same case for other people from my background, but I feel like sometimes I strive to do so many different things because of where I come from. But it's almost like a, like a struggle or a fight to get out of that environment. I think in terms of time, I feel like scholarships actually save a lot of time because having that sort of financial backing there and that security there means that I don't have to work, I have chosen to work, so I've chosen to be um, a part-time mentor, that's why I feel like they should be promoted more widely. Um, I want to say uh, a final thank you to our panellists who have been so amazing today. Uh, thank you so much for coming and speaking to us. Busy body, baby. So this is her last education symposium, unless of course they're going to write you back, Dilly. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's accurate, I think, to say that Dilly has transformed the education landscape at LSE. Outside of class. What's more, this platform empowers student members to be changed beyond the university. With a head high and a back straight, I don't think you're feeling me. I'm out here being everything they said I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be. Here's a casual shot of a Ferrari driving through campus. Here's me and my cameraman. <laughs> but that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and have a good day.